While larger machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch have been around for a while, we're just now starting to see frameworks come out that target machine learning on microcontrollers. Felix, a firmware engineer at ARM, will explain how these frameworks can help machine learning algorithms run more efficiently on embedded systems. Thanks, Sean. Let's begin with why the machine learning story around ARM Cortex-M processors is important. We have more than 52 billion shipped units, and enabling them with machine learning capability opens a whole lot of new possibilities for the edge devices. Now, you could question why now, and why not a few years back? Part of the reason can be attributed to the availability of exciting new models with low memory and compute intensive properties. The other part is due to the work done in frameworks like TensorFlow Lite Micro, targeting the processors in the low power embedded space. For example, a MobileNet V2 in its floating point version is larger than 3 megabytes and uses more than 300 million multiply accumulate operations. Whereas, the person detect model from TensorFlow Lite Micro, which is based on MobileNet, takes up 250 kilobytes of memory and around 7 million max in computation. This reduction in memory and compute requirement makes machine learning on the edge devices a realistic option. That said, the improvements in model design and frameworks are just the beginning. The advancements in model and framework design opens the door for optimized libraries like Seams SNN. The Cortex Microcontroller Software Interface Standard for Neural Networks is an optimized software library for key compute-intensive machine learning operators. It is provided by ARM with a permissive Apache 2.0 license that allows it to be used in open source and commercial projects. Seems as NN supports the open source framework TensorFlow Lite Micro and is to be used together with it. Let's look at how that works in the next slide. To begin with, access to Seams as NN is integrated into TensorFlow Lite Micro. The interpreter in TensorFlow picks the optimized kernel if available, else it falls back on the reference kernel implementation. In this way, the focus remains on optimizing only the compute intensive operators and support for new operators can be incrementally added in Seams SNN while still being able to run through the networks. Now, let's get on to the main topic in hand, that is optimization. Why do we need to optimize for TinyML? If we set aside the obvious user experience aspect, power and cycle constraints drive the need for optimization. Reducing the cycles for inference reduces the awake time of the processor and the system in hand resulting in extended battery life. It also enables more complex models to be deployed within a given inference time budget. These are factors that could push an application from being unrealistic to realistic. That said, whose responsibility is it to optimize? As the proverb goes, it takes a village to raise a child. I believe everyone has a role to play in optimization. Starting with a hardware designer to a model designer, to the one setting up the software environment, to the library optimizers, everyone can make a difference in how fast the end application is. Let's take a look into this now. Software environment. As boring as it may sound, it is the foundation on which most optimizations are based on. The different levels of the pyramid are about the multiple choices related to the compiler. Some have their own level to signify their importance in the bigger picture. Without going into the details, things like having an incorrect build variant or a leftover compiler option has the potential to completely negate any gains from using an optimized model or library or hardware. Coming to Seams SNN and library optimizations, let's look at what goes behind the scenes. At its core, the optimizations can be grouped as addressing the cycle bound problem or the memory bound problem. The first part is to ensure that the algorithm uses the processor's capability to its maximum. In its simplest form, this could be writing non-complex C code. At the other end, it could be using intrinsics or assembly instructions for cases where the compiler is unable to utilize the processor's capability. The second part is centered around the idea of data reuse to reduce the number of times you fetch data from the memory. Finally, we put these two methodologies together to strike a balance to reduce the cycles for execution. Staying on library optimizations for Cortex-M processors, there are two kinds of optimizations that are targeted by Seams' NN. 
On the left, you have processors that do not have single instruction multiple data capability. And on the right, you have SIMD capable processors. For non-SIMD capable processors, optimization is mostly about ensuring efficient memory accesses and reducing complexity of nested loops. An example is removing any conditional statements in the innermost loop. For processors which have the ability to handle multiple data in a single instruction, we additionally use intrinsics or assembly instructions to ensure that SIMD instructions are used. Let's now look at the kind of performance improvement that we can get from an optimized library. Using the latest vector-capable processor, Cortex M55, you can get around 10x performance improvement on the popular mobile net V2 and wave to letter models. This number of course can differ in different systems depending on the software environment settings that we discussed earlier and on hardware aspects like memory access latency and cache. The bottom line is you have an open source optimized neural network library that can improve the performance of your application to take it to the next level. Lastly, let's touch upon model optimizations. Let's assume that the model in question is 8 or even 4-bit quantized. Just that might not be sufficient to extract the best performance out of the target processor. Different shapes of tensors can affect the level of optimization. For example, shapes that lead to unaligned access can result in an increase in memory access time. Some shapes are inherently better than the other as optimization can be done without the need of special techniques like image to column transformations. The overall takeaway here is that to get the best performance out of an optimized library, there are other players involved and optimization is a team effort. I hope this session is useful in your tiny ML endeavors and thank you for tuning in. Thank you.